Sini, is the everyday life important? Mm, yeah, I think very important. I think the everyday life routine is very important. Ah, but you speak about the everyday life in your work. Yeah, because I think I get inspired just uh, here and there on the streets and uh, reading a word or um, yeah I think I get inspired living my life and find things that interest me and keep interesting me and I want to make a painting about about and about the everyday routine too no I think the routine is help me to find interesting things but why is it important because I think painting is an everyday practice um, but the subject could be exceptional, something, an exceptional event. Yeah. But you, but you show people just being shaved, eating mm -hmm. meat. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, uh, I think at that time I made more social paintings before 2018. At that time, I like, I really like, I'm always really interested in people. I like how, see how people interact, how people flirt, and how just being intimate. Um, and after? After, I don't know, after, I think, I think when I figure something out, or I know a certain kind of painting that I could paint, I wanted to, well, I feel like it's like me learning French. I knew I keep learning new vocabulary, and I want to uh, have new subject. I want to paint new subject. I want to just um, evolve. Yeah, but because when we look at your painting, mm -hmm. one of the first question, mm -hmm. one of the first feeling is that they are beautiful. But one of the first question is, why did you want to paint that? So, yeah, it can be attitudes, yeah, but it can be everyday life too. Yeah, I think so. I, um, I think those are things that I interest me, and then I feel a painting impulse that I want to make a painting about. I think when I paint, maybe it could be a very simple idea. I, I see, I, I love the the coiffures in Paris that they always have signs that eight euros for men and I, I I've seen like really seems really masculine masculine guys and they are taken care care of by very masculine guys as well I think I think I like this kind of touch and this kind of moment I, I feel when I make a painting it's always very simple ideas I think when I make the painting it's also a way for me to find meanings for myself and the, ca the fact that you are Chinese mm -hmm. has an influence uh, on the choice of uh, subjects, you think? I think because that's really who I am, I almost ignore that. I feel like whatever I make are seen through my eyes. And I'm, I think I will just be a Chinese person all my life. <laughs> and I, I don't care, I don't mind. And uh, um, yeah, I don't think this identity is the, the subject of my work, but it will always be with me. Yeah, but it's a reaction, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And now one can see that there are, there's a lot of animals. Yeah. Why animals? Well, I think I started off painting more animals from 2020. During the lockdown, I still uh, went to my studio every day, and I felt like the social ev events uh, felt really unrelevant to me anymore and I really couldn't see myself making paintings about people having drinks. I just felt, well, I just didn't see it matter to me anymore. And I started to look at old photos and uh, and also uh, I started to think about the animals I know and I wanted to paint them as metaphors of human conditions. And I, I think they have very innocent eyes and I, they also have human-like gazes that, um, yeah, I just want to paint them. And they are also very cute. Is there a spirit in your painting like you would be painting kind of Nouvelle Vague? Oh. You know, like from uh, the 60s, the movies? Yeah. They are young, they are sexy, they are 
beautiful, they are dreamers. Well, I think I cannot deny that. And also I think I still, I think my life, I still have a fantasy life in living in Paris. Um, what is the really, fantasy for? What I is don't know. It? I feel like I I used to live in the fifth, and then at the time every evening I come back from the studio and then go home. I have to cross the sun, and then the sunset is so beautiful. And every time I feel like, oh my God, I live in Paris. But this feeling still, uh, I still have this feeling with me every day living in Paris. Cine in Paris. Yeah, because I still don't speak French well, and I, I see people they are talking next to me. I cannot really catch the conversation, so I imagine what they are talking about. I imagine um, what's in your head, in their head, but I can see their passion. I feel the energy, so there's a lot of space for me to imagine. So you have a parallel fantasy life. I, I don't know. I will not say that. I just feel like my information about everyday life is all fil filtered because my, in, well, loss in translation. I don't know. I think but did you watch a lot of uh, movies from the Nouvelle Vague? Yeah, I, I did. Um, yeah, I did. I watched a film, uh, a few at, at the Grand uh, Action. Sometimes they had old movies. But uh, I like them, but they are, I don't think I would paint anything from those film clips. It's almost um, feeling too close um, ah. to re represent something of my life. But you, when you paint, you, it all comes from a photography or not? Yeah, I always need uh, photo references, yeah. I, I take these photos myself, or sometimes I found some images and I make drawings based on these photos and then I paint, yeah. And what about the titles? Now you have French titles. Oh yeah, I do have French titles. I think when I have very specific words, I think I associate with very specific situations. They almost have an image uh, in my head. You, I think you asked me that there are paintings called Ankoyab. I, I which really, means incredible i really like this word incroyable also, yeah and also uh i i heard from french people that this word is very exceptional people would only say that when they mean it so, <laughs> but uh, french what? people are lying too you know um, well i take it ser seriously <laughs> so i feel like i want i think i always want to have very strong effect in my work, in my paintings. I want people to receive something, perceive something physically. And I think when I could achieve in a painting, I want to give myself a thumbs up and a card and yeah, and uh, have a descriptive title in bra uh, brackets. So but you have a strategy with the titles, right? Well, For example, this one is called Pomegranate, but there's no pomegranate in it. No. There's another fruit. I, I don't know. I think I, I will not call it a strategy because sometimes I have a interesting word in my head when I'm making a painting. Sometimes I don't. But this painting, well, just kind of by chance. Mm. I, I, well, maybe I like that when you look at the title and actually you don't see the object that is described in the title. And I, um, I like that you could have another dimension uh in well through the title you but it's almost something. sorry it's almost surrealist in fact so yeah i think I, I i feel like in my paintings i do look for things that can give a twist so i don't make a realistic and representational painting uh, so i think i want to achieve that in different ways sometimes with color sometimes um well just uh, with the composition the subject and sometimes I want to use the title to give it a twist. So when one look at your painting, the most striking for people interested by the artistry is your relation to artistry in the use of the composition mm. and also in the use of colors. Mm. You have uh, artistry is very important to you, no? 
I love looking at paintings. I think I love going to the Louvre. Um, I think I get inspired by paintings. I think um, by their composition, by their subject, or even by their paint brushes. And I think you look at the technique when you go yeah, to the Louvre. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I went to the Louvre two weeks ago. I just wanted to see the Vermeer painting of a woman sewing, and I like that how he painted the fabrics almost in the same you don't feel the fabrics look less important than the figure you always you always seem to me painting the same manner and then you but then they always feel a little bit fuzzy it does you cannot really nothing is really really on focus i think um yeah i, I love looking at how they deal with very specific uh techniques and uh, with subjects. But when I look at your painting, my feeling is more about end of 19th century than... Uh, really? Yes. Whom? Who you are thinking about? Uh, wow. Um, in the colors, it's very much impressionist. Oh, actually, I do not look at impressionists anymore. But, no, like um, impression, impressionist, like uh, large impressionism, like mm. Manet, for example. Yeah. And... Um, Yes, even Monet in a way. Yeah. yeah I and, really and sorry, okay. and also uh, Degas in the composition. Mm, I don't like Degas, <laughs> but don't show this. <laughs> I don't know. I I was a really big fan of impressionist paintings when I was a teenager. I feel that kind of love I had. I don't know. I I kind of want myself to grow out of it, so I don't really look at that that much anymore but I do love Chardin. Chardin? Yeah. Oh, it's well, wonderful. I told, yeah I think I really love going to the French gallery in the Louvre of um, there's a b really beautiful Pierrot painting by uh, what's his name? Uh, um, this white. This is incredible. I know. Of what's course. his name again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I, I love going to the French gallery at the Louvre. I love the Pierre painting by Watteau mm -hmm. um, from the Rococo period. I I love the how he painted that white uh, white clothes of Pierre Ho. Uh, it has well this kind of silk satin uh, uh, texture, and then your figures and donkeys on uh, on the ground but you could only see their upper part of their body and then he didn't explain why these figures were just there and then they were just directly attached to the ground and that was very unrealistic and I like to pass that uh, keep going at the Louvre uh, to see the shutdown paintings I love the monkey painter and uh, and the, and the still lives. I love how he painted the the uh, the pears and the peaches. Mm. Yeah. And uh, is there a painting a, a wolf or a dog? A wolf, I think. Oh. No, but in your paintings. Oh, yeah, no, it's not a wolf. It's a dog. It's but, a dog. Yeah. So could you tell me the story about this one? Mm, I I had a trip to Barcelona a few years ago. Uh, I went there to visit the Prado Museum and I was... Uh, Which is not oh, bad. Uh, uh, well, that's, sorry, it's Madrid. Sorry, I'm mixing up. I went, I had a trip to Barcelona for whatever reason. And I was just strolling around in the city and I saw a really big dog. And um, and he found a piece of ham, leg. Uh, I don't know how he did it, but uh, he spent like 30 minutes just chewing on that big leg. Uh, animal leg, uh, and I think it was a very striking image. Um, but to represent that, you you choose a very special color, which is uh, more a color of a dress, for example. What? Uh, uh, the color of a dress. Oh, you would think so. Mm. It's pinkish, uh, I know. purple. Yeah, I remember I, I, I found that color and I feel really excited about it because it feels like a very specific gray. I painted two layers. The first layer was like a peachy color, and then I covered it with like more of a gray tone. But then the pink kind of the reddish color kind of still comes through. 
Mm, I think it's kind of low key dramatic for me. Uh -huh. That kind of work well with the subject. But it's like the color of a dream. Mm, could be. I just want it to be a non-specific place. Mm. Yeah. And so next step is what? Next step? Yeah. Uh, next step is going back to the studio and uh, <laughs> paint. Yeah. Merci, madame. Merci.